Hey everyone, it's Brent Hornby here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel here, and this actually turned out to be a little more on the project than I anticipated, but I did decide, you know, with this being the 40th anniversary of the Calgary Flames in Calgary here, I mean the franchise has actually been around for 48 seasons, if you include the 8 seasons in Atlanta here, but with this being the 40th anniversary of the Calgary Flames, I decided... Well, let me rank all the jerseys that the Calgary Flames have worn in their 40-year history here. And I, if you read the title here, I decided there were 17 jerseys to rank here in the Calgary Flames history here. And how I came up with 17 jerseys here is my criteria here is that I have counted the All-Star jerseys that the Calgary Flames have worn this past season in St. Louis and last season in San Jose, and there was a black and white one there. And then there was a couple alternate, alternate jerseys that they wore. One that I, let's say, I like a lot more than the other. You may agree or disagree there. And then, for example here, I'm wearing the Reebok version of the current red jersey. I counted the Reebok and Adidas put together because it looks relatively the same there. And then, of course, there was those pedestal jerseys. And then I included the originals and retros. I distinguished the differences between those two here. So, yeah. So that's how I came up with 17 jerseys there. Of course, there was the uh, Heritage Classic as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to obviously, with many ranking videos, I'm going to start with my least favorite to most favorite here. And if you know me personally and if you watched uh, all my videos here, you probably have an idea what I have at the top and what I would have at the bottom here. But I figure, you know, just being a fun project here, let's rank them all And this being the 40th anniversary season here. I just want to share with you what I think is the best, worst to best jerseys that the Calgary Flames have worn in their 40 year history here that represents the Flaming Sea here. So that's how I came up with them. So before I get into my list here, if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fans journey here, home the flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, and Stampeders here, just uh, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and follow along with that bell icon here. I mostly obviously do Calgary sports, but I also do some personal vlogs, and I do some attempt to comedy, and I also share experiences, let's say, at a sporting event, or when I'm on the road on holidays there. So that's all on my channel here, if it sounds like you'd be interested in watching. To follow along with this Calgary Sports Fans journey, just make sure you like, subscribe. I also have my social media links below there to also follow me there. So uh, without further ado, before I note here, I still use Windows Movie Maker for uh, making my videos here. So uh, there's going to be breaks in between here, but I'll try to you know put some music in just to, you know, Keep it interesting here, and also, last thing here, some of the jerseys I do own, so I was able to put my own pictures in, but some of the graphics I took from various sources here, so it, I acknowledge all the, all the people that uh, have owned those pictures, but I use that, you know, for the purposes of showing my ranking here, so there's going to be a mixture of pictures I've taken on my own, and I took in for the purposes of this video here. So without further ado, let's start off the list here from 17 to 1 year. So here we go. Yeah, starting off with the uh, list here, number 17, was those Wrangler Wordmark jerseys. I wasn't really a huge fan of those Wrangler Wordmark jerseys there. I mean, it just something bothered me with that Calgary word and that small flaming C. It's, I mean, it was different. It's been the most different jerseys that uh, you could say the Calgary Flames have had. But uh, I just wasn't too wild. I mean, I liked the Alter logo was all right. I mean, it kind of mixed in, you know, the CF and the Alberta landscaped and... You know, the mountains and the prairies, that's what makes Alberta unique there. And I know inside the uh, neckline there, it had kind of that mountains and that. But yeah, it just, 
it looked like a, I keep saying in some of my other videos, it looked like a cheap, uh, you know, jersey that you buy a Canadian Tire or Walmart there. But uh, I just, it just wasn't wild to me. And the fact that we didn't win too much in those jerseys, I remember. I mean, other moments that I remember in those jerseys, well, one was a good moment and one was a pretty bad moment. I mean, the bad one was, well, actually, Dennis Wyman had his infamous incident wearing our Wrangler Wordmark jerseys there. And then we actually wore those jerseys when Jerome McGinley came back to Calgary for the first time there. But uh, just I just wasn't too wild of them. I mean, it's my opinion. Obviously, it's my list here. I'm not going to spend any of my hard-earned money on buying it. But, of course, if someone gave it to me, I'll still gladly add it to my collection there. But uh, I actually think, you know, one redeeming factor that I have with those jerseys is I think it would work better as a baseball jersey. If you took that exact same concept, keep the same font in that, and with the alternate logo, make that the ball cap. Let's say if the Calgary Flames made a summer baseball team and to compete with the Okotoks Dogs, be in that league there. I mean, Seaman Stadium is named after, you know, Seaman Brothers, who was one of the owners of the Flames there. I actually think those jerseys with that concept will look better as a baseball jersey. And not to completely throw the Wrangler Wordmark jersey under the bus here, it is still a lot better than notoriously ugly jerseys from the 90s there. Let's see, remember Wayne the Pooh for the Boston Bruins? Or, you know, that Mighty Duck coming out of the ice? Or, oh, yeah, I love those Burger King jerseys that the Kings had that Wayne Gretzky, you know, had the unceremonious task of wearing. Or Mike Keaton, oh, he, he refused to let the St. Louis Blues wear those musical no ones. And, of course... You know, Captain Highliner of the New York Islanders and the Flying V, the Vancouver Canucks. The Flames Wrangler Wordmark jersey are better than those. And let's just say this starts off the list there. So that's where I have the Wrangler Wordmarks here. So, yeah, that's my opinion. And thankfully, we stopped wearing them after the 2015 16 season there. So uh, that starts off the list there. So let's only move up from here. So time to move up to number 16 here. On this case here, I uh, kind of clumped the two together here. This is where the first of the All-Star jerseys come in here. As I have 16 and 15 here. Were the all-star jerseys that the Flames players that represent the Flames, Matt, you know, Matthew Kachuk, Mark Giordano, and David Riddick there. Of course, uh, they all represented them. But uh, I put the, them 16 and 15 here with the all-star jerseys that were worn in St. Louis there. I know I know what St. Louis was coming after because all jerseys looked like that. And, you know, if this is what we expect for all-star jerseys going forward here, I guess I'm going to say be prepared to be underwhelmed here. And the other thing that pushes the All-Star jerseys a lot lower on the list to me is the fact that they charge even more for a jersey that's only worn at the All-Star meeting there. And then the, I mean, I have actually seen the uh, one in person at the Flames Fanatic Star. They had a black one and a black blank one, and it was a little more expensive than a jersey you buy. And then they have one with Chuck's number in there. I mean, would you be willing to pay over $300 to have an All-Star jersey with Chuck's numbering on it? And I'm not sure. And it's only worn at the the All-Star game there. I mean, of course, if someone gave me one, I'd obviously take it just like with any of my jerseys here. But the, the Flaming C the, on the front there, and actually all the logos, because they had all 31 teams there, it looked like even a stripped-down version of the logo there. So, uh, I mean, it, it was a red flaming seed, and it was just red there. So, for 16, I put the whites there, and I like the black just a little more there, and I think that actually the flames only wore the blacks at the All-Star game there. So, this is a case where I clumped those two together, but I count that as a Calgary Flames jersey because it represented the Calgary Flames, and as I mentioned at the beginning there, for the All-Star jerseys there, if it had the flame you see in the front there, that's why I'm going to count that as a Flames jersey. Not the other generic ones where you might see a little patch logo there. Because I look at that generic one as for the whole lead there. So, uh, so yeah, I wasn't too wild on the uh, 
St. Louis Coliseum, I mean, they had that musical bars there. It's been a while since I was in music class there, but uh, it used that concept there, which gets me wondering, with next year's All-Star Game being in Florida, Miami, Florida there, are we going to have palm trees aesthetics, sunsets aesthetics, or, you know, some panther-like? I don't know, but uh, I'm not willing to spend, you know, more, even more money on a special occasion jersey full price. I mean, if you really, really, really want one, wait for clearance there. So, 16 is the 2020 All-Star jersey white, and 15, I have the All-Star jersey black there, and I think for the purposes of this, I'm going to clump those two together there. In some cases, I'm able to do that, but uh, this is a jersey ranking area where I'll talk about the jersey, but I just didn't feel like I wanted to break up the, the All-Star that way. So that's up to number 15 here. So let's continue to move up from here. So now, once again, I like the last year's All-Star jerseys a little bit more that was worn in San Jose here for 14 and 13 here. And the reason why I actually like these ones just a little better is because they actually it looks very nice textured. It looks like what a jersey would look like if you were doing a pencil art there, and it looks sharper. However, you know, the being equal friendly and plastic there, I'm not too sure. But once again, I mean, are you willing to spend over uh, $300 for a named jersey, which seems to be a lot more than a standard jersey replica that you buy for any team? But uh, for the case of the San Jose All Star jerseys, they look a little better. I mean, the black and white, it looks sharp there. And then in this case here, for number 14, I have the, the white, the black. And then actually for 13 there, I have the white one there. So in this case, I actually like the white jersey a lot better for the All-Star game. So 14, I have the black one. Because the black on black, because it was a black flaming sea. And it was black logos that they used for all the teams there. It, it, it actually looks sharper on the white. So, and then that's just how the numbering looked. I mean, it's an inverse of it, but it, it just looked better there. And I would almost give credit that it looks like a penciled jersey. I mean, it had the All-Star logo on the patch there. So I would say, number 14 is the black 2019 All-Star jersey. And number 13, I have the white one there. So in this case, I actually like the white jersey better. Than the black for the 2019 All-Star game, but still at this spot on the list here because I, uh, I I'm so far been underwhelmed by the All-Star jerseys there. So uh, and the fact that the how much they charge for it, but I'll say once again that's something to wait to get on clearance there. So that brings me up to number 13 here. So now here we move up to number 12 here. So number 12 here, which uh, I'm not too sure where this is, could be interesting here. But for number 12 here, I put the 2011 Heritage Classic jerseys in there. And the only reason I had actually had the privilege to go to the All-Star game and saw those jerseys live here. But it just looked so-so mm, if you ask me there. I did pick up a couple jerseys. They were on clearance there. I mean, they were too small for me to fit in them, but I have it for my collection there. As you see there in the picture where I have one for Jerome McGinley and Mika Kiprasov there. And I think I still say it did a nice job to rep represent the Calgary Tigers from the 1920s there. Which was the first professional hockey team that uh, represented Calgary there. So it was kind of a replica of that which kind of had like a new retro look there. And it, it, it looks sharp there but the thing that kind of put me off a little bit there, especially when I saw it live in action there, where's those cream colored pants. It just, I think that's why I put it a little lower there. I mean, it was definitely a cool experience. No point of tell weather-wise, it was definitely a cold day there. But it was definitely awesome to be watching the hockey game outside here, 
to go back to its roots there. And you know, I'm not too sure if the if I ever want the Calgary Flames to uh, wear those Heritage Classics again, maybe in 10 years for the 50th anniversary. I don't know. Maybe it will be another Heritage Classic that they'll bring those back. But they definitely need to uh, find a different pair of pants there. It just didn't work well there. And now, of course, there, of course, there was too many memes of uh, looking too much like a famous clown from... Uh, famous fast food restaurant, also known as Ronald McDonald there, so uh, it definitely had a lot of those memes there. I'm going to say it did a nice job to uh, recognize the past of the Calgary Tigers there, but I just didn't like the pants too much, and you know, it is what it is. It was Harris Class jersey, and I bought those on clearance there because I wasn't willing to pay full price for uh, that kind of jersey, knowing that, you know, they're not going to wear them again there because I haven't seen, they haven't worn it again since the 2011 Heritage Class there. So that's where I have at number 12 there. So let's continue moving up here. So yeah, number 11 here. Remember those pedestal jerseys? Yeah. Definitely looking back there. It definitely says so 1990s there. That was an era there where all jerseys all looked the same with the same bars and on the, you know, down to the waist area there and the shoulder, you know, the shoulders and the sleeves there. Definitely was radical and different at the time there, yeah. I'm sort of date myself and it definitely uh, looks 90s there. And the other thing that, you know, was very different was how they slanted the numbers and the letters. That definitely took away from the, uh, you know, the standard blocky graphics, like the blocky numbers and the letters there. It definitely looked cool at the time, and I like them at the time, and I still like to pull it out once in a while, as you see with my videos there. And I have the red one there below there, even though apparently the reds during the pedestal jersey era sold more on the whites there. But, uh, it's just how the striping looked and, you know, how the striping looked at the waist there and then the pedestal coming up there. The, uh, it's just how, it's just how it broke. It looked more broken to me than the whites there. So, I mean, it definitely was cool and radical and maybe now we can look back on and kind of laugh. But that seemed to have been the trend in the 1990s there where everyone wanted to be different. And it definitely screams 1990s looking back on those pedestal jerseys there. I mean, it's not they're not as bad as some people say they are. I look back at them and laugh there. And actually, if you go to the Flames Fanatic store there, you can actually buy a hat that has the pedestal striping and the pedestal on the you know the shield there. And yeah, just uh, and then the thing is, the logo just looked very different there. Also, the fact that you know how they had broke up the you know the white and the gold and the, and the black there. I mean, introduced black there, and I, I guess that was also the trend. In the 1990s there, where everyone wanted a black jersey, even though it wasn't their primary color. Now you're slowly seeing in sports here that, unless it was their primary color there, everyone seems to be going back to their colors here. But, uh, you know, it showed also a different shade of red, and it all looks good in the sea of red today. But uh, I'm not too sure if we're ever going to see the pedestal jerseys again on the ice there. I think, you know, that's probably something they should come back in 10 years when the Flames are celebrating their 50th anniversary here. Maybe these are our, our Flying B jerseys that, you know, what the Vancouver Canucks do, for example, there, uh, when they bring out wearing their black skate jerseys there, that they haven't worn their loud yellow Flying B jerseys during the warm-up only there. Maybe the Calgary Flames will wear it in practice one time. I don't know. I think it would actually be neat to uh, see those pedestal jerseys back on the ice once in a while. Just, you know. Have a 90s night and have them wear that. So number 11, I have the red one. So let's move up to number 10 here as I go back to my list. So number 10, yeah, we're kind of clumping in the pedestal jersey era there but I actually personally like the white one better 
than the red ones, even though apparently the red pedestal jerseys sold more. The reason why I like the white ones better, because actually the stripings look a little cleaner. And then, then I actually it was a refreshing look at the time for the 15th anniversary season there. It, it just looked sharper to me with the ones at home. At the time, it was the home jerseys there. Because for a while there, it was always where your whites at home there. I don't know. It just it looked sharper there. The red looked, you know, looked like there was a little more red at the time. And of course, you know, going back to the, you know, the getting away from the blocky numbers and letters there. And the slanted numbers and letters there. It, it looked cool and different at the time there. and I still am not quite sure exactly what inspired putting the pedestal up. You know, putting the C on the pedestal. I don't know. It just... It definitely, I still say, it definitely screened 1990s here looking in retrospect. And, uh, you know, I still gladly, you know, pull it out there. And, of course, when you saw on the red one there, I was a Trevor Kid fan back in the day. But my childhood favorite flame that most people are synonymous for was Jill Otto there. And he actually wore those uh, jerseys during the first season there before he went to Philadelphia there. And actually Jerome McGinley, when he became a rookie, was in those pedestal jerseys there. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, the first time that I saw, you know, more modern was, was NHL 2005, or NHL 5 there when I had that game there. You know, when the game gets more advanced and you have more collection jerseys there, they have, for some reason, they're in the NHL 5, and I'm not too sure on the more modern NHL games there. For some reason, they only put the white pedestal jersey in there. They didn't put the red one in. And I just put it on just for the heck of it. It's like, hmm, that just looks a little different. Kind of funny in retrospect, but, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I seem to like them just a little more than many fans here, but it definitely screams the 1990s here. So now we're in the top 10 here. So number 10 were the white pedestals so let's uh now work our way up into the top 10 here so number nine i have put in the white jerseys that the calgary flames wore after the pedestal jerseys there and actually at that time there until the before going into the 2003-04 season there, those were actually were the home jerseys there. And actually the striping and I he cleaned it up after the uh, pedestal jerseys there. And actually the Calgary Hitman had that same style of stripes and numbers and the fonts that they used there. So number nine, I do have the white jerseys. I didn't own a white jersey in that particular style there, but it definitely cleaned it up a little after all the pedestal jerseys there. And then eventually it became the road jersey there when the when the 2003-04 season there when the Calgary Flames brought their color jersey in. Which uh, definitely, when they got rid of the pedestal jersey there, it kind of, you know, for a couple years there, we kind of missed the red there because we didn't have a red jersey there for a couple of years till the 2003-04 season there as the Calgary Flames wore those white jerseys at home there and a jersey to be mentioned, the black jerseys that they had will be mentioned later here, we're on the road there. and But uh, I guess the only memory I can have with those white jerseys there is that the Calgary Flames tied an NHL record for 11 wins on the road in the playoffs in the 2004 Stanley Cup playoffs run there, and that was the whites that they wore. Remember some of those big bone-chilling, you know, wins? You know, Game 7 in Vancouver and, uh, you know, winning that Game 5 in overtime in Tampa Bay to go be up 3-2 to two there. Those are those white jerseys there. And if the Calgary Flames would have finished off the deal in 2004 in Game 7 there, they would have set an NHL record for most road wins in the playoffs there in those white jerseys there. But they just looked very plain, if you ask me. I mean, the Flaming Sea was red and looked bold there. But, uh, yeah, and they, were, they wore those up until the 2006-07 season there before the, you know, the Reebok and the more advanced, you know, jerseys came in. So, uh, yeah, I put that kind of in the middle list there. It was our home jerseys there for a while there. And it just, we just kind of missed red when we had those. And the fact that, I'll just highlight that we uh, went to the Stanley Cup Finals on the road and won those big games on the road in those there. So, uh, 
that's where I have number nine was the white jerseys that they wore starting in the 2000-2001 season there up to the 2006-07 season there. So that's number nine. So the number eight here, well I'm actually wearing it right now. I put the current red at number eight here. And it's, I'm going to say, it's had its run here. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's a nice jersey here. But the thing that kind of bothered me, and this is the Reebok version, the Adidas one, looks relatively the same, except you don't have these strings here. But, uh, and I guess the other thing, if you look very closely there, especially in NHLUniforms.com there, that in this Reebok era, they definitely uh, slanted the numbers and the letters a little more, but they straightened them up in the Adidas version there. But the thing that kind of just looks crazy is just the striping in that up the side there. And I know the and they first brought these in in the uh, you know the seven eight season there. The socks looked a little weird, and they changed them after the first year there. But I mean these are nice reds, but you're seeing these a lot less there for jersey that will be mentioned higher in the list here. But the one redeeming factor that I remember with this jersey here is it still kind of keeps that magic from the 2004 in a way. But I remember how we stirred the pot. Because we had the Maple Leaf for Canada. Go Canada. They made the right decision when we made these back in 1965 to fly these. But we definitely stirred the pot with this guy here. Putting the Alberta flag on there. That's how I remember, you know, the of Alberta here. But, uh, you know, it's kind of a nice way to promote Canada and Alberta here. But... These are definitely starting to look plain, and uh, there's definitely better jerseys here. So this is where I have it in the middle of the list is our current reds here. So that's number eight here. So number seven here is basically the white version of this. I actually like the white one a little more here. And I don't, I don't own, I haven't owned the white one in this style here, Reebok or Adidas here. But I just like the red one a little better just because it, you know, it just looks a lot cleaner and, you know, I mean, as much as I like the red, but I like the red flame and see a lot more. I mean, it took me a while for me to get used to the black flame and see there. But the, the, you know, the white one that they still wear on the road right now, I mean, it definitely just looks sharper with the, you know, the red, the red numbers, the red flame and see, the red letters. And then, you know, of course, the, the Alberta flag and the Canadian flag there. It just uh, looks cleaner for some reason. I know the black pants and this bar coming up here. I mean, I don't know why we needed to put that in there. But, uh, but no, I just, it's just how it looks, you know, with the white and the red. There's less black in it. That's why I like the current roads right now. But that's what I have at number seven there. So let's continue moving up the countdown here. So number six here. Well, this might be a polarizing jersey here. It seems like this one people seem to either love it or hate it here. But number six... I put up there, Blasty is its nickname, or the, you know, it was brought in as the alternate jersey there. It started in the 1998-99 season there. So I liked it. I definitely loved it. It was at the time where we brought in. I got a little nervous with the marketing campaign because I remember, you know, the, the global news at the time or, you know, two and seven. At the time, they just said, the Calgary Flames are moving to New Jersey. And I kind of got a little nervous there, because at that time, that was when the Canadian dollar was low there. I already lost to Quebec Nordiques and the Winnipeg Jets there. And, you know, both Alberta teams were on shaky ground. The Vancouver Canucks were also on shaky ground there That after when the Jets and Nordiques left there. I got a little nervous knowing that the Flames and Edmonton were next. So when they said the Calgary Flames were moving to New Jersey, I noticed they slowed it down. But I got a little nervous singing... Oh no, why are we going to move this team to New Jersey? They already have a team, and they got the both New York teams there. But then it was how they marketed it, and says, oh, a New Jersey. And yeah, I definitely like that, uh, you know, the alternate jersey. Although it lost its luster there 
in the 2000-2001 seasons, I'll admit there, where that ultimately became our road jersey. And then that's where definitely, believe it or not, when red was our primary color there, the Flames went like three or four seasons there without having a red jersey. So that was just like, like it was, it was strange. Like that was our primary color, but we didn't actually have a red jersey there. But, uh, you know, it's nicknamed Blasty, and it got retired after the uh, 2006-07 season there because the Flames have not worn it. They, it seems like they distanced themselves away. It's a horse. That's a flaming horse, not a donkey, not a dragon. I've heard it all there. There's a scene, I believe it's Batman Begins. There's a scene in there where there's a horse snorting out fire there. That's what that logo is supposed to represent here. And I think the Calgary Flames should bring back Blasty. I'm not quite sure how that name comes from. I know it's nicknamed Blasty there. But, uh, you know, a couple of moments that I remember from those uh, jerseys there was the marketing campaign. Didn't come off a good start there, but it was just sharp. We had a nice black jersey there. And, uh, you know, it was nice when it wore it once in a while when we still had the pedestal jerseys there. But Theron Fleury, he actually scored his 823rd point as a Calgary Flame, and at that time, it surpassed Alan McInnes there. He actually wore that jersey there, and Jerome McGinley had his magical season in the 0-1-2 there, where uh, he won the Art Ross Trophy there. And then the fact that in my personal collection there, I actually, I originally got that jersey blank there, but I asked for Christmas to get it all numbered with McGinley. I had the 25th anniversary logo on there, but I actually, I actually missed those jerseys there, and I would like to see those back there, and I'll give my final thoughts at the end on my condition on getting that back there. So I have it at number six here. I think this is a polarizing jersey here, because I hear a lot of other, you know, hockey fans say it's an ugly jersey there. I mean, for example, I thought the Edmonton Oilers, you know, Sprocket Comet jerseys were ugly there, but I think this is a polarizing jersey here. That I think some people seem to love it or hate it here. And then the thing is that the Flames Fanatic support shop there, I actually still see hats sold, black hats sold with that logo there. So they haven't completely dissed themselves away from it. So, uh, you know, could we get it back? I don't know. But I know that they dissed themselves away because uh, with the, you know, the white jerseys they had, they had them as the shoulder patches here until this era where they had the two flags there. But I actually like Blasty a lot better than many fans do, but uh, maybe it has a call following. So that's why I have number six, the Blasty, Calgary Fiends, Black alternate jersey. Definitely was better than the Wrangler Word Mark, if you ask me. So that's number six there. So number five here. Well, it took some time for me to warm up to it, but it made sense when the NHL decided to wear your colors at home and your whites on the road there, it just made sense for the Calgary Flames to finally get a red freaking jersey. And they brought back a red jersey. I was excited here, but it took me some time to warm up this black flaming sea, though. And, uh, yeah, it, it took some time to grow up me, but when the Flames brought those red jerseys in, fittingly, the 2003-04 season there, and, uh, yeah, that was definitely a magical season that the Flames have had in those red jerseys there, the Sea of Red got revived because we finally got back in the playoffs for the first time in eight years. And, you know, we won that emotional series against the Vancouver Canucks. And then we upset the Detroit Red Wings and then upset the San Jose Sharks with Mika Kiprasov after they traded into us. And the next thing you know, we were in the Stanley Cup Finals there. And But, yeah, that's definitely the ultimate memory of those red jerseys here. It's definitely a lot better than this one here. And I'm glad when they brought... Reebok in, they still kept some of the magic there, but it was definitely a cleaner jersey there, and uh, that definitely revived the Sea of Red, the Calgary Flames there, and it was definitely great to see Red back here, and uh, one thing to note here, I mean, I bought the jersey a couple years later when it was still that era there, that, you know how the numbers and that were black there? Actually, the names originally started off black there, and then they decided to change it to white there because they couldn't see the names as well. So if you actually see someone with a black name and a black number, that actually that is the original one. That's the 1.0 version of the red jerseys that the Flames wore 
2003-04. And they wore it till the 06-07 season there before they went to this style there. I had the 1.1 version there, which is what they did for most of the season there. So, yeah, that's, uh, it was definitely nice to see get a red jersey again. It was just crazy to think about when we had the pedestal jerseys. And then we brought in that cleaner white jersey there. And then we decided to make Blasty the, the uh, road jersey there, which I think kind of why I bumped it down a little, the Blasty jersey there. But it just made sense that we needed a red jersey there. It, just, it seemed like we lost that color there. And the fact that the team was mediocre and bottom in the standings there. But it was just something when we brought those red jerseys back, it reignited the Calgary Flames and then definitely, you know, getting into the playoffs, going on that run to the Stanley Cup Finals. Oh, those are memories, man. It just reignited it. And, you know, red, red is back stronger than ever. And it's definitely in my favorite color here. So that's number five here. So it probably doesn't surprise you where I have number four, three, two, and one here as... Uh, I haven't mentioned those other jerseys yet, and uh, I'm sorry to be anti-dramatic, but let's find out where I have four, three, two, and one here. So yeah, number four, I have put in the original whites there. I just, I just, I distinguished the difference between the uh, originals and the retros here. Just because of how it looks there. So the original whites, what they wore for the first 14 seasons that the Calgary Flames were moved from Atlanta there, definitely was definitely a solid jersey, a solid classic jersey, that if you were to come up with that today, I think it would still pass. I mean, it was just the old school, you know, the old school patch, the old school stripes there. It's just something looked great with the, uh, you know, the red and gold there put together. You know, it just it just looked right, and definitely was a sign that when we decided to keep the flame name from Atlanta there, and basically just swap the uh, flaming A for flaming C there, that just tells you how great the jerseys were. So I have the original whites at number four there. So three I did have put in the original reds there and the reason why I put the original reds there a little higher there well obviously it's their primary color there and a lot of times growing up I felt the I like the road jerseys at the time a lot better there but the only thing that uh, you know it just looked different because I remember now difference with the HDTV but those two TVs there with the original whites it didn't seem as much when they when the flames were on the road there. But with the original reds there, there were times there it actually looked a little oranges and it just looked a little a little weird there. But it was still definitely a great jersey that the Calgary Flames wore the four, first 14 seasons that we were in town there from Milana there. And of course, those were the jerseys that they won the Stanley Cup in. The picture that I showed there we kind of had that heritage knitted style there. And then of course I had the Stanley Cup uh, 100th anniversary logo there. And Joe Otto was synonymous to being my favorite Calgary Flame there. But uh, it's just, you know, it's a timeless, timeless jersey there. So yeah, without further ado, let's uh, we need to move on to the top two there. <laughs> So number two there, well, I mean, it shouldn't be a surprise what I have at two and one here. But number two there, I'm going to call this one the Retro White there, where the Calgary Flames originally first wore those at the 2019 Heritage Classic there. And actually when they released the jersey, retro jersey schedule there, the Calgary Flames were going to be wearing their retro jerseys even more this season, including wearing those whites a few more games other than the Heritage Classic there. And... Uh, you know, it definitely looks like a more redefined version from the original there. I think just because of how the, uh, you know, the stitching and the equipment is now, that's why you see teams that, you know, have that retro style. Because, I mean, the shoulders look bigger. 
and the red definitely looks more dominant there. But the reason why I put the retros just ahead of the of the uh, classics or the originals there was because of the fact that uh, the C actually looks a little more bigger and bolder there. So uh, it definitely looks nice there. And when the Calgary Flames were playing the Winnipeg Jets at that Harris Classic, you know, at Mosaic Stadium there, and they had those retro jerseys back, I'm like, please, they got to go back to those. It's, it looked sharp. It looked awesome. It just brought back those memories when the Flames had their best dates on the ice there. So, of course, number one is the retro red jersey. I'm sorry, I'm the, no, not surprising if you know me and uh, been following my videos here, but number one, definitely the Gallagher Flames retro red jerseys. And the reason why I put those ahead of the originals there is that I think it's maybe the red looks more red now. And the Flame C definitely is bigger and bolder from what they wore from the first 14 seasons there. But is this a sign of the times that I will eventually get my wish that the Calgary Flames are going to go back to those retro red jerseys full time? I mean, they've been wearing them more often there. I mean, they first brought them back in the 2010 season there. For their 30th anniversary there. They wore it for a few games and I thought, yeah, that looks nice, you know, throwback. And then going back to the NHL 5 there, actually there was a couple games that I played where I had the Flames wear those original jerseys and I'm thinking, yeah, that actually looks nice. I hope they bring those back, you know, permanently. And, you know, maybe it's just nostalgia. I'm having nostalgia, you know, overload. I mean, those are the jerseys I grew up with and, you know, and we won the Stanley Cup with them. And we had our best days on the ice. But it just looks sharp. And the Calgary Flames have been wearing them more often. You know. You know. They played them for 12 games last season. And then they brought them. Said they were going to wear it for all home games. Last season for the playoffs. Unfortunately. We didn't have enough playoffs there. But the fact that the Calgary Flames. Have been wearing them even more this season. And actually I don't know if this is a sign or not. But uh at the Flames Fanatic store here in Calgary. I walk by there, I actually see more retro reds than this style jersey. Is it either because they can't keep these guys in stock? Or are they implying that you know those retro reds come back? And I don't know, do I do I speak for most Flames fans that uh, we need to bring those retro reds back full time and I mean these are great jerseys and had a nice run here. But the fact that uh, you know it's had its run, but I just, I absolutely love those retro reds, and it looks sharper than ever, how they make it conform to today's uniforms, and the sea just looks a little bigger, it looks redder, and it looks great in the sea of red there, so yeah, I mean, I, I mean, sorry to be anticlimactic, but it shouldn't surprise you that I have the originals and the retros in the top four there, so before I wrap it up here, let's give a bonus here. I did say I wasn't going to, uh, I was only going to rate Calgary Flames jerseys here, but I decided, well, we might as well, you know, acknowledge your history with the Atlanta Flames there. So if I were to put the Atlanta Flames jerseys on this list here, I would tie them at four and three with the original Reds. And that's where I have the Atlanta Flames jerseys there. So they're tied with number four, the original Whites, and number three with the original Reds there. And it's definitely nice that uh, for the Calgary Flames, at least for the assistant cap there, and actually was when they brought in the pedestal jerseys there, that they used this A for the assistant captain there. You know, the Calgary Flames, they should still maintain that if or when they bring back the retro reds to put the flaming A as, uh, you know, to show the assistant captain there. Because it's a nice way to show the, uh, you're acknowledging the past of the whole franchise here. And the fact that, you know, I put the originals and the retros in my top four, it shows that it was a timeless jersey that the Atlanta Flames definitely came up with. I know they changed the uh, striping just barely from the first season, but essentially it's the red jersey that you see, the retro. I mean, obviously the bigger logo there, but it's basically the same striping other than the flaming A 
with the Flaming Sea. So it's definitely a timeless jersey that uh, it's been on the ice for almost 50 years if you count the a lot of days there and you know if I think highly of that jersey it must be a pretty damn good jersey it's it's almost up there with the original sixes that you can't really mess with the original six jersey so much because it's timeless and uh, the Calgary Flames have been part of the history for over 40 years here and it'd definitely be nice if the you know they bring back all the jerseys that are ranked you know here and there for the uh, 50th anniversary season there but uh, one more thing before I close out the video here. If you look on the win column article there, and there was one talking about jerseys there, they actually showed a rendering, and it had Johnny Goudreau wearing a blasty jersey with the retro-style pants, the retro-style striping there. That would be exactly how I want the Flames to bring back a black jersey, to bring back blasty. My only condition is you make the retro reds, and White's full-time, that would be the new third jersey. So if you look on that wing column article there, I'll put that in the description below there. Just give me either yes or no. Would you want that to be the third jersey when they bring back, hopefully, the retro reds there? So, yeah, I mean, this was definitely my Calgary Flames jersey ranking video here from 17 to 1 here. I mean, it's all been a part of our history here, and definitely it's been a great part of it. You definitely, some of them, some of the jerseys, as this definitely stands the test of time, as you see with my rankings there, and others, it definitely screams so 1990s. See those pedestal jerseys there, and how they were all radical and different at the time there, but of course, now I'll throw it out to you people out here. What's your favorite Calgary Flames jersey? Do you like the retros as much as I do? Did you like the Wrangler word marks a little more than I did? Did you like the pedestal jerseys, or how about these jerseys? I mean, where do you rank them? I put it out to you. I told you my ranking, and, and then do I resonate with the uh, majority of Flames fans that uh, I love those retro jerseys. I like Blasty. The Harris Classic was, mm, pedestal was definitely great for the 90s, but I don't know too sure if it's aged well, and those Wrangler word marks, uh, uh, just keep it in history but uh so anyway that's my calgary flames jersey ranking video here so if you want to follow along with this calgary sports fans journey here home of the flames him and roughnecks and stampeders here this to make sure you hit like subscribe and mostly obviously do calgary sports here but i also do some personal vlogs and attempt to comedy and share my experiences on the road with my smartphone when i'm out of there on holidays or at a sporting event there and I also have my social media links down below there for other ways you can stay in hold of me to follow along with this Calgary sports fans journey here. So as I say, go Flames go, and hopefully you enjoyed this video and it was worth the wait for you to finally find out where I rank the Calgary Flames jerseys in history here. But ultimately, I just it, I ultimately just want those retros back, and uh, it's a timeless jersey. It looks awesome, and... You know, it just it looks awesome, and I'm definitely glad that other than the alternatives, you know, the black one there, red is definitely the primary color, and we definitely love the red and gold here for the Calgary Flames and the Sea of Red. That's definitely one of the things that makes Calgary awesome here. So, go Flames go, and I'll see you in the next video.